John Kennedy O'Hara entered politics. He knew it would be rough. He would have to take his licks. Nobody knows what the future's gonna be. But what happened to O'Hara was a travesty. What happened to O'Hara was a travesty. Hello and welcome to Hardfire, a political talk show from a libertarian point of view. I'm your host, Jim Lisinski, chair of the Manhattan Libertarian Party. My guest tonight is John O'Hara, a political dissident and convicted felon. We're going to find out in a moment just uh, what John did to become a felon. Uh, thanks for being with us tonight, John. Thanks for having me on. Uh, I should mention that uh, we also invited John's uh, political nemesis, uh, Brooklyn District Attorney Charles Hines, or anybody from his office to, to come and speak tonight and represent the other side of the issue we're going to discuss. Uh, Mr. Hines and his office uh, declined our inv invitation, so we tried to present both sides, but the other side chickened out. So we'll plow ahead. Uh, so John, uh, what terrible thing did you do to society to, to become a convicted felon? I, I registered to vote, and I voted. Registered to vote? And I voted. Uh, and well, what, what made you want to do something like that? Well, I was over 18, <laughs> and, uh, and I figured I would vote. Right. Since I'm 18, I've never missed an election. Okay. I voted in every election and primary in my life. Right. And uh, 1992, I moved into my ex-girlfriend's house, and I registered to vote. And in the next five elections, I voted. And then she sold the house, and I moved back to my original apartment. And then four years later, I was arrested. You were arrested, and you were charged with? False registration and illegal voting. It was seven felony counts. One count was when I registered to vote, and each time I voted was a felony count. And that's just, this isn't just a, now, figure people must register to vote and vote from a place that's not their residence all, all the time. This is. You would think this would be a, a misdemeanor, a technical violation, but they, tried, they slapped you with a felony. Yeah, well, no, it's, uh, each count was one to four years, right. and I was facing 28 years in prison. Right. I was convicted because I voted from a place that was not my principal and permanent residence right. that I always intended to return to. Uh, it wasn't, I wasn't convicted of voting from a false address or right. a sham address or anything like that, and, uh, and it set a precedent. Right. Yeah, there, yeah. there hasn't been a case like this yeah, before. I was, was going to say, this supposed to be you know, people registered to vote, uh, change their address, inadvertently mm -hmm. vote from the wrong address. So there must be thousands of felons like you in New York State. I hear it every day, almost every day. Someone will say something like, well, you know, I still vote in Brooklyn, even though I, you know, the, it's, it's almost like some people, it's a tradition. Maybe they grew up in Brooklyn and right. they moved out to Long Island, but they still come back and vote with their parents on every election, stuff like that. Yeah, but, yeah, but these yeah. people haven't been prosecuted. No one's ever been prosecuted. How many, how, how many people have been convicted of felonious uh, voting? The yeah. last person to be tried and convicted for what's called false registration, illegal voting, took place in 1873 in Rochester, New York. The defendant in that case was Susan B. Anthony. Wow. Now, she was convicted because of her gender. Mm -hmm. And from what I know, my gender has not been called into right. question. From what I know, <laughs> from what I know, no, nobody's alleged that. Well, who knows? These grand juries are so secret, <laughs> right. you know. But uh, no, this is the first of its kind. So, so you and Susan B. Anthony, you're, so you're a pretty it's, good historical company. You can't tell us apart. Yeah, and 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 then what happened was uh, I felt it was important to take a stand on right. this, and uh, inadvertently, what I've done, not that I meant to, mm -hmm. is that it's created now case law where if you vote from a place that's not your principal and permanent residence, you are subject to felony prosecution. Right. And, uh, and that's pretty bad. I mean, when a country starts locking people up for voting. Right. That, there goes the democracy. It's gone. Right. Yeah. Now, yeah. But it's part of a trend. Right. It's part of a bigger trend. Now, now why, from Susan B. Anthony now to, to John O'Hara and the ensuing 130 years, uh, this no, nobody thought to prosecute somebody 
Why did Why did District Attorney Hines, the you of all the, mm -hmm. the, the millions of New Yorkers, uh, Brooklynites under his jurisdiction, why did he decide Well, there's, there's a million registered voters right. in Brooklyn. Right. So why are you saying, you know... Why, I, why pick on you? Why four years later did he pick me out of a million voters right. and put his chief for homicide and all right. yeah, yeah, this was a small potato. So they they this, pulled out the big guns on you, right? This was his most expensive case. Right. And, you know, but look, in Brooklyn, there's hardly any crime. Right. We yeah, all know yeah. that. What made you, what made you so, so special, such the a menace to society that they had to, they had, they had to get you? The the reality is that what I was really, my real crime was that I ran for office and lost. You ran for office. I ran for That's office. Oh yeah, I ran for office about four or five times and I lost. Right. And, and you didn't get the permission of the machine. Well, that's what it is. The winners take office and the losers go to jail. Right. And it's not unique in other countries. People just don't think it happens here. Right. And even though I wasn't charged with running for office or anything, it was, it's, the reality is you, you, you offended the powers of the Yeah, day. yeah, yeah, because in uh, New York State, there's no more elections. I mean, right. there are only primaries. Right. In Brooklyn, especially. In Brooklyn, you have 20 assemblymen, 16 councilmen, 12 state senators. They all, they all have one thing in common. Every mm -hmm. single one is a Democrat. So there are no elections, and the Democratic primary has become the election. Now, you might say, well, you ran for office. Doesn't that happen all the time? No, no. There are a lot of uh, elections happen. Right but primaries don't. And there are a lot of office holders in Brooklyn that have been in office maybe 20 years and never had a challenge. Right, and that, that's an important point. There, you hear so much in New York about how there's so much machinations and gimmicks mm -hmm. to keep people off the ballot. Uh, people are New York aware State, of Yeah, New York State is the toughest state in the country right. to get on the ballot. 50% yeah. of all the election law litigation in the whole country goes on in New York right. State. Yeah, people and the other 49 states have the other 50%. Right. New York State I mean, there is a form of democracy in America, but not New York. Right. And, you know, that's it's not my opinion. It's just the way it is. It, and it's designed by incumbents, and it's, 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 it doesn't look like it's going to change anytime soon. Right. What I did, my, the reason why they went after me is I know how to get people on the ballot. Right. I've been doing it since I was a kid. I've never been paid for it, and I've never been on anyone's payroll. Right. This is something, it was a labor of love. Right. And I felt that it was important that politicians just have to come out every two years and explain what's going on. Right. But no, it, it doesn't work like that. Right. <laughs> you, you can't go giving the people a choice. No, no, no. You don't go running for office in this town. Okay. So the reality is it's uh, I ran for office. Okay. So you ran for office, and they decided to go after you. And, okay, they, they slap you with this, this um, suit. But they didn't just uh, charge you, and then it was over and done with. They, um, they took their time on this, and they... they a lot of money and resources into it's it. the only case the Brooklyn DA has prosecuted three times I was can tried three times three times yeah I, yeah, I, yeah I, that's, I, that's another thought, thing I, I got I that record was like, too uh, yeah. constitutional prohibition against double jeopardy yeah but I guess triple no jeopardy one, is no okay one, no one mentioned anything about triple jeopardy yeah okay. I've had some bad luck I guess do you want to buy some lottery tickets with me All after right. this I mean I don't think so no. right yeah <laughs> no what, what happened was I was tried and convicted I was indicted in 96 and then I was convicted a year later <coughs> and then my conviction got reversed on appeal, which is rare. Right. It got reversed on that appeal. So you thought you were home free at that point? No. I right. knew there was going to be a second trial. Okay. Yeah. And there was. And it was a hung jury. It was, you know, they couldn't make a decision. Then I got tried a third time. And I was convicted again. Mm -hmm. And then I went up on appeal again and I lost, right. which was a devastating feeling. And I thought that was it because the high court in New York State only hears cases by leave application. And the New York State Court of Appeals, they heard 40 criminal cases last year for the whole state of New York, wow. uh, which means they, they do virtually nothing. Right. The Court of Appeals here is nothing. But they heard this case. They, 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 my leave application was granted, and they heard the case, and I lost in a 5-2 to two decision. And I thought, again, that was the end of it. And what happened was, I mean, there have been press articles on this, and sometimes, you know, people get involved, right. and this attorney contacts me. And he said, you're still doing community service, right? And I said, yeah. He said, well, that's a form of confinement. So he said, so you can appeal right. your conviction to federal court. Did you do any jail time? No. Okay. No, no, no. I've been able to keep myself out of prison. Uh, it's cost a lot of money, and it's, right. it's been tough. But no, I haven't. Uh, well, that's good. Yeah. So, yeah. so this attorney contacted you. And because I was still doing community service, right. my, my sentence was I uh, was given five years probation. Uh, I used to be a lawyer. That's gone. They disparate you. Yeah. Yeah. For, for voting. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I was given five years probation. I was fined $20,000, and I was sentenced to perform 1,500 hours of community service. 
And, and, uh, and just to give everyone some perspective again, when did this all start? In 96, so about 10 years ago. Yeah, for 10 yeah. years ago, they've been, for 10 years now, they've been ruining your life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, a prosecutor has that. Because? That's the power of a prosecutor. Yeah, if a prosecutor, you know, prosecutors love to use cliches like we prosecute everyone equally. No, it doesn't work like that. Right. 98% or 97% of the cases that go in the DA's office don't go to trial. It's the judgment of the DA to decide who to bring to trial. Right. Where do you want to focus your resources on? You know, every prosecutor starts out by saying, well, will you have limited resources? No, no. Prosecutors have unlimited resources. Right. And if a prosecutor decides he is just going to come after you right. and go through every credit card slip and every check you've ever written and interview all your neighbors and put you under surveillance, which has happened to me, right. and keep doing it. Uh, there's nothing you can do about that. There is no remedy. I mean, if a cop is hassling you, you can yeah. make complaints. There are, there, are, there are procedures. There are checks and balances. Right. Now, what happens if a and prosecutor lies, goes before this jury and he's just lying through his teeth mm -hmm. to get you because he wants you convicted? Um, surely, you know, we, we can send the prosecutor to jail, right? No, no. It's called absolute immunity. It's right. in statute and it's in case law. Prosecutors have absolute immunity for what goes on in the courtroom in a grand jury. If a prosecutor knowingly puts false evidence and you spend 10 years in prison right. because of it, and then it gets overturned because of that. Right. It's no, just, nothing happens. Miscarriage of justice, and he just, it's just, the he way just it keeps going home to dinner and keeps just, collecting his paycheck. It's the way it is. And uh, this and is something that, there's a bigger picture here. Right. Uh, the prison population in this country has doubled in the last 10 years. Right. And the, and the fact is... And there's not a lot of uh, rapists and murderers and, and, and car thieves that are uh, you know, doubling that. I, even, though I, I, even though I used to be an attorney, yeah. I never dealt with criminal law right. until I was indicted right. in this spot. So naturally, I haven't you know, been able to right. practice much criminal law. But I, I had no idea, you know, and, uh, and I think a lot of the people that are watching this really don't have an idea of how this system works. Right. Uh, the way the system works is if you don't take a plea yeah. and make a deal, if you become one of those 3% that goes to trial, right. the system comes down on you like a ton of bricks. And I'm convinced that we have a large portion of the prison population that doesn't belong there. Right. Uh, maybe technically not belonging there for false evidence or whatever. Mm -hmm. But there's also the bigger picture of, you know, do people belong there because they possess drugs right. or something so like something that. that wasn't hurting anybody else, but they, right. had, they, had, right. they, had, they had the wrong vegetable in their pocket. Yeah. They would have been carrying around a bag of parsley. Yeah. But it was cannabis. And yeah. So. yeah, yeah. And, you know, and I've learned a lot about our right. system. I mean, not to knock the cops, but I think, I think most arrests are motivated by a police officer looking for overtime. And it just trickles right in. Right. And when you have people that are, that are poor, and don't know how to deal with the system. I mean, I used to be a lawyer, and you know, and then it happened to me. Right. Now, now this is, I think this is a fascinating story. This is like so outrageous that they just messed with you, and Charles Hines brought the Brooklyn political machine down on you for having the temerity to challenge yeah. them in election. Uh, we're gonna go to a public service announcement uh, break at this time, and when we come back, uh, I wanna talk some more about, especially about how you've started to turn the tables on them and how you're exacting a little bit of revenge for, for the little guy, the guy who's fighting City Hall. Uh, but now we're gonna, we're gonna go to our message. I'm Jim Lisinski, chair of the Manhattan Libertarian Party. I'm your host tonight for Hard Fire. I wanna talk to you a little bit tonight about the uh, Libertarian Party in New York State. Uh, we have a vibrant, growing, libertarian, pro-freedom political movement here in New York. Uh, we're a small party, it's getting bigger all the time, and I'd like to invite you to join us. Uh, you're hearing a lot tonight about how government power corrupts and how these guys get into office and they start messing with the little guy who wasn't trying to do anything but vote. And this happens all the time. It's like, it's the old adage, power corrupts, absolute power corrupts absolutely. The Libertarian Party believes that, you know, we don't want political power. We want, we want to get into office to, to take power away from the government. We want more freedom, less government. If you're the, the type of American, the type of New Yorker who believes that uh, you know, freedom isn't this old-fashioned idea, the government's gotten too big, uh, if we, we, need, we need to rein it in, uh, and check out the Libertarian Party. Uh, we're on the web throughout New York State, ny.lp.org. Uh, here in, uh, in Brooklyn, we have a, a growing uh, Kings County Political Libertarian Party. Over across the river where I, where I live, we have the Manhattan Libertarian Party uh, running people for office. We have um, Gary Popkin running for Brooklyn Borough President here this, 
this year. Uh, I'm running for public advocate. We have candidates from mayor down to city council. So uh, why don't go to ny.lp.org and check out the uh, Libertarian Party of New York. Uh, thank you. And now back to hard fire. Okay, John. Um, as we're saying, the uh, district attorney's office here in Brooklyn, Charles Hines, they went after you for voting. You messed with them. You challenged City Hall, and, uh, and they came down on you like a ton of bricks. Ruined your life for the last 10 years. Uh, what I found interesting in reading about your case is, um, you know, th they're not so squeaky clean themselves. And they're, for people who are messing with people on technicalities of uh, where they register to vote and uh, you live where you say you live, tell the government you live, um, they're, they're not uh, on the straight and narrow, narrow either. Um, why don't you tell me about, a little bit about this law um, that says the, um, the, the district attorney and his uh, assistant district attorneys, uh, their residential requirements and how well Charles Hines and his employees mm -hmm. are following it. Well, what happened was uh, Harper's Magazine took an interest in the story and they assigned a writer who, uh, who spent like two years, you mm -hmm. know. It's incredible magazine mm -hmm. articles. So they, they, they dig and they, it's not like, uh, you know, a right. newspaper, right. you know. They, they have an hour to yeah, write the story. Like, oh, all right, you know, like yeah. kid shot, boom, you know, yep. story's out. No, yep. the magazines, they really, they, they the, dwell The real journalism. It. Yeah, and Harper's, they, they, I got to hand it to them. They spent two years on this. And what they found is that while the, while the investigation was going on against me in 96, the Brooklyn DA had registered to vote from the municipal building. Oh, so Char Charles Hines, he, he claims... He doesn't live in Brooklyn. Brooklyn. He's, right. he's supposed to be a Brooklyn resident. Right. Because but by law, he's, right, he's required to... Uh, he's the registered DA. to vote from the municipal building, 210 right. Jerome Street. Right. And his chief of staff also was yeah. using that and voting from his parents' house in Queens. It turns out assistant district attorneys have a residence requirement, too. They have to live in the five counties. Right. And the guy who prosecuted all three of my cases, it was like his noble cause. Right. He, he right. lives in Montclair, New Jersey. He. Yeah. He's and been, so, so, okay, so he's this been is illegally collecting a paycheck for 20 years. So, so, you know? so the ADA that was prosecuting you that spent hundreds of thousands of dollars of our tax money going after you for voting from the wrong address, and he's required by law to live in, in, in New York City because he's a New York City employee. Yeah. And he's a, and, and it's he's, like the chief of homicide it, being a serial killer. Right. I he's mean, a, he's, just, he's living know, out it, in Montclair. Yeah, yeah, All yeah, right. yeah. And, and listen, from what I know, this program is going on in the era of September 12th, right. and the night before the, uh, the, the primary, the right. primary in Brooklyn, September 13th. Yeah. And uh, you know what I said earlier, there are no checks and balances, right. which is true. But the only remedy there is is to try and take the DA out of office. Right which I tried four years ago, right. and uh, didn't succeed. But uh, I got two people uh, that got involved. The League of Women Voters that Susan mm -hmm. B. Anthony formed filed an amicus brief in my case. Right. And I asked the president of the League and the guy who wrote the brief to run for judge in Brooklyn. Right. They didn't even know how people became right. judges. And I said, run for judge. I'll get you on the ballot. Right. They ran and they won. Right. And it's the first time that ever happened. That's great. And then in 2002, it happened again. So I did break the back of the, the organization right. as far as electing judges. Right. But Hines was shown to be weak. I ran this uh, woman against him, Sandra Roper, great person, and she just, uh, there was no money, there was no support as far as political establishment. Mm -hmm. The newspapers blacked out any coverage, and she got almost 40% of the vote. Mm -hmm. And because of that, Heinz is now under the gun, right. and uh, he's, he's got a challenge, and I believe he's going to be beat. That'd so, be great. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, yeah that would be this, great. Get this weasel out of office. And yeah. How long has he been there now? Uh, since 1989. Right. He's been there. And usually DAs never got races in this city. Right. And after what we did in 2001, yeah. now the Manhattan DA has a race. Right. And uh, there, there was, there was a, a notion that prosecutors never get challenged. Right. But, you know, something, something, something's got to give. You know, this country is facing a crisis right. with its prison population. America has more people in prison than any country in the world, and that's not open for debate or any. That's just a fact. And some people, you know, just say, "Well, who cares?" Right. Well, everybody in prison eventually gets out, yep. and you don't take someone and put them in a cell block for ten years and expect them to come out and just, you know, yeah. get a job and rent an apartment right. and go on with life. Right. This is something we all pay for. Yeah, and this is something that's ruining thousands of people's lives, and it's having a damaging effect on society. And it's just, and it's just not the people in prison; it's right. their families. Right. It's it's, and I know that because I've been through this. Yeah. Even though I haven't been in prison, you know, right. and most yeah. people say, "Well, how you been this?" You know, something. I yeah. talk to people who spend ten years in prison. I don't know how they did it. Yeah. 
you know, and it's. And, uh, uh, you used to be you used to be an attorney. Yeah, yeah, I was a Wall Street lawyer. You know, you had a pretty good career going. Yeah, it was life was good. And then, it was. It was. And now it was great till I had a rap sheet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now you're just fired. You took yeah. your livelihood. Yeah. And. Uh, yeah. So this is incredible to me. Okay, so so now to this. Um, so okay, so the hypocrite Hines, you know, he's registering to vote from the municipal building. Mm -hmm. He has chief ADA. Uh, who is prosecuting? No, one third of his ADAs don't meet the residency. Yeah, so, so, so yeah. this isn't yeah. just a couple of it's, couple it's of bad endemic. apples. This yeah. is no, one, one third of them. Yeah, so, yeah, so. and you know something. Listen, it's it's something. You know, it's an attitude. It's about listen. I've lived in the same neighborhood right. in Brooklyn my entire life. I've never moved more than ten blocks from where I was born. Right. Okay, so I've never left the neighborhood. But when you have a DA who lives in Queens, mm -hmm. actually Breezy Point which is a segregated, all-white community. Right. It's 99.9% .9 white. And th this is where, where Heinz goes every this, night. This is where he lives. It's yeah. a gated community yeah. where... Even though he's the Brooklyn DA and is required to live in Brooklyn. He's lives right. out of Breezy but, Point. But when, it's really where he lives. I mean, and yeah. I'm 100% Irish Catholic. Yeah. I know what Breezy Point's all about. Right. I know what those people are all about. All right? And, you know, it's Breezy Point is where Italians are tolerated, mm -hmm. Jews are not welcome, and blacks and Hispanics are forbidden. Right. And I don't think that's the type of person who should be the Brooklyn DA. Right. His campaign headquarters is in Manhattan. He lives in Queens, and his staff lives in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you're going to take, and that's the point of these residency laws, is that you take an interest in your community. Right. That's really in the big picture right. what it's about, not as his principal permanent residence on 47th Street or 59th Street. I moved 10 blocks from where my apartment is, right. and then I moved back. And continue to vote in that neighborhood. And yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. meanwhile, yeah, Heinz is living this... Uh, Ivory Tower, get a community lifestyle out in well, Queens and being the... There is nobody to prosecute right. the prosecutor. All right, so, yeah, so tell us about, what, what did you do? When you, when you uncovered this, that Heinz and one-third of his ADAs well, the are, guy are, are, are breaking the law. Okay, so when he, but, but you took some action on this. What did, what did you do? Yeah, I filed a complaint with the Conflict of Interest Board. What and I did was, see, on campaign disclosures, which are public information, right. Heinz had, what he did is he developed a system where his assistants who don't live don't meet the residency requirements, they have to donate $300 every six months to his campaign committee. <laughs> so it's a profit center. Oh, yeah, so, so yeah. It's, listen, the law. it's, it's a racket. Like, it's, it's okay a, yeah. to break the law as long as you, as long as you, you kick up 300 kick bucks. For the re -election. It's, it's no different than a mob. Right. Okay, you kick upstairs. The more people that kick up, the better they do. Right. So I couldn't believe it. So I look at his campaign disclosures, and it has the person's name and address. I'm right. seeing this Montclair, New Jersey. Some of the Cold Spring, New York, I'm looking at some addresses like, how do they get here? It's like two hours each way. Right. You know? yeah, so they're not just so, down the, in the wrong borough, they're in the wrong yeah, state. Yeah, but you know, he was taking in like 40 grand a year, right. which adds up to a quarter of a million, you know, it adds up to like, you know, significant money. So I see on the campaign disclosures all these staffers and where they live, right. and I filed a, I put it all together, and I just filed a complaint with the Conflict of Interest Board. And they acknowledge they received it, but they say they can't handle the investigation. Why can't they handle the investigation? Well, that seems like the perfect thing. There is the no investigation. No, 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 I, no, gave, I gave their names, addresses, phone numbers, right. zip codes. All you have to do is write them a letter. I mean, there's not a lot of investigation right. involved. Now, this is a conflict of interest board. They're, they're, the sole reason for being is to adjudicate the, conflicts of interest. No, the sole, the sole reason of the New York City Conflict of Interest Board mm -hmm. is to hassle the little guy for politicians. They're not going to take on a DA's office. They're going to take on some firemen to talk about running for state senate. All right, that's what the conflict. They are the conflict of interest board are no different than any other hack agency. They are there to cover for the DAs. Nobody takes on a DA. Nobody takes on the DA. So they're they're completely immune. If they, they are immune. They so are so they so are so above the law. And it's just the they, only. They lie in court. No, they, they, no can problem. They, they, they can do they, it. They, they lie on their, their job applications. And that's no, our no system. Yeah. I'm glad we have the best judicial system in the world. Right. You know? So, uh, yeah. yeah. That's, so, that's great. So, so that's the way it is. So there's nothing we can do. So we know that there's a third of these, these ADAs breaking the law in New York, in, in Brooklyn. And, and by the way, if they are, are, are proven to be so, what, 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 that there is a, a remedy in the law that, well, for starters, if, if allegedly they're supposed to be removed from their cases, right? Yeah, yeah. If a timely objection is made that a prosecutor doesn't meet the residence requirement, there's only one case on this. Yeah. It mandates removal. Right. So, I mean, you know, but look, you know, this is what happens so, when prosecutors compromise themselves. Right. Are people getting better plea arrangements? Are people walking out without doing any time instead of doing three years yeah. because, you know, yeah. the AD doesn't live there? Yeah. Look, the DA doesn't have press conferences over these things. Right. His press office isn't faxing out press releases about this stuff. Right. So you don't hear about these things. Right. But it's going on. People can read newspapers. So. 
And the only remedy is I hope people go to the polls and, and elect John Sampson on September 13th. Right. I, mean, I, I don't know Sampson personally, and uh, I, I would doubt he's a libertarian. You know, I assume he's got to be better than this Weasel Hines. If nothing else, mm -hmm. he's been abusing the system far too long and is too corrupt, and we've got to get him out of There's here. There's got to be a change. Yeah. And I think there will be. I think there will be. And, yeah. and it's, it's the groundwork that we laid in 2001 right. that led to this. And uh, Sandra Roper was running for DA. She pulled out because she realized she would be splitting a black and Hispanic vote. Right. Ethnic voting is a big factor in primaries, as you know. Right. And she's running for civil court judge countywide. Right. But, you know, that's the, way, that's the type of person Sandra is. I mean, she's not going to put her own personal ambition above the bigger picture. And, uh, and look, I just tend to think it's going to work out in the right. end. But it's, 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 been a, you know, it's been a tough decade. Yeah. I've yeah. had better decades. Right. <laughs> so so, so uh, what's next for you? Is there, 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 is there any light at the end of the tunnel for, for John O'Hara? What happened was the, the writer from Harper's, he got the, eight, the DA's office just sat down, and they knew they were being taped. He told them there was a tape recorder. They gave a two-hour interview where they admit the whole thing was a deal with my former opponent. Wow. They just sat there and said, yeah, we did it. <laughs> I mean, we, like, we, we didn't screw this guy because yeah, yeah, he, yeah, you know, he ran against our man. So we yeah, have to determine the They literally him. said he kept running for office and losing. We had to lock him up. We had to set an example. I mean, like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> let people get away you with know, that. This way, other people won't run for office. Right. So, I mean, and I, and I got to, it's incredible what people say to a journalist. So what happened was the writer from Harper's put it all together. He wrote up an affidavit, gave it to my attorney. And there's a motion pending to overturn this thing for being a selective prosecution, which is what it was all along. I just never had the proof. And uh, there's supposed to be a decision in a couple of weeks. And, you know, I'm hanging in there. So there's a, there's a, cha there's a chance, there's a chance. You, you can yeah. get this overturned. Yeah. And then if there's an overturn and a chance, you can get a civil suit out of them, go after them. For uh, yeah, yeah. For selective, you, believe it or not, there is a cause of action for selective prosecution. So. Yeah, there is. They, they've, they, you pierce their immunity. Right. When they act, when the prosecutor acts in the role of an investigator, when a prosecutor acts like a cop, right. which is what they did here, they they did the investigation themselves. Right. Yeah, that's called a qualified immunity. Then you can pierce immunity. I don't mean to get into the technicalities, no, but you know, yeah. it's kind of interesting. Yeah. You know, I find it interesting, yeah. but you know, maybe this is me. You know, these things, it's like cancer, and unless, unless it happens yeah. to you, so. you don't you don't dwell on it. Right. And, you know, if this never happened to me, you know, I just would have had the same attitude, I guess, you know, but these things change. So, so with any luck, you'll be living in Charles Hines's uh, I'm going to house. move into the municipal building. Okay. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's, uh, <laughs> and there's no chance that Charles Hines is going to get put behind bars, though, unfortunately. No, that doesn't happen. No, no, right. never will. No, right. no. So look, maybe he'll get knocked out of office. You know, I think the unfortunate part about there being a lower turnout, which is what we have, less people are voting. There's two and a half million people in Brooklyn, but only probably 150,000 people are going to vote in the race. Right. The upside is that people that do vote know who they're voting for. Right. And I think, uh, I think, you know, I okay. think... I got, I got to red cut you off. We're, we're okay. out of time, but I want to thank Johnny Hara very much for this fascinating interview. Uh, yeah. I'm Jim Lisinski. Um, let's kick uh, Heinz out of office in September, and uh, thank you for watching Hardfire. Hines is the DA, some people call him Joe, some people call him Charles, no one seems to know, Joe or Charles, I guess it's all the same, but can you trust a DA when no one knows his name, can you trust a DA when no one knows his name, he brought an indictment that defied common sense Illegal voting from his girlfriend's residence The first one convicted since 1873 And the only other one, Susan B. Anthony The only other one, Susan B. Anthony